Here are the three diets you should try. Ketogenic diet, paleo diet, and the elimination diet. Those are three diets everybody should test at least once. Okay. Uh, I have, I would, I feel like paleo and keto or elimination are all too closely related to not throw something else that's different. Like for example, I think vegan should be in there. So here's, actually, I would love to hear why, why you think <clears throat> vegan actually first. Well, I, I think that More people- More like a protein fasting kind of concept with that. Is that what you're thinking for vegan? Well, I think, I think when people go vegan, I think they find that they have a lot of autoimmune reactions to other things. Like, for example, red meat could be an issue for somebody. Um, they could be eating something like, uh, that's, that's mm. not in the vegan diet that, uh, that popped up. Um, I also think, too, that I think you should try it because I think there's this huge movement for everyone to do it and you should feel what it feels like to be on it. You should feel how uh, difficult it is. I also think that it, it is easier to go low protein. We've talked about the benefits of like protein cycling. So occasionally running on a low protein diet and then coming back uh, up. So I think there's, and, I, and again, it's so different. It's the opposite of like carnivore or keto. So I well, would throw it in there. There's, I mean, I think every, and I will loosely categorize these as diets that are somewhat established you probably can make the case that each one may provide some value to people. By the way, the reason why I, I picked three these three di these three diets. Yeah, why those three? Each one of them uniquely present something different that someone can learn from. So obviously, all of us are not big fans. Some of beneficial it. sort of tool in terms yeah, of use usage. Yeah, like none of us are fans of quote unquote diets. Now there are, you know, a minority of people, a small percentage of people that will do well or better in specific types of diets. But most people are quite individual, um, and diets should be more individualized. Now, the reason why I picked all three, ketogenic diet is specifically designed to have you run off of ketones. Now, there are cases where people have brain fog, uh, certain mental disorders that, like, for example, depression, anxiety, um, bipolar. In, in the data, those people seem to do really well running off of ketones. In other words... They eat so it's low carbohydrates. It's protective, yeah. It's just, it just uh, you're, the cells of the body run differently off of ketones than they do off of uh, glycogen. And there's some evidence that shows that things like depression, anxiety are worse uh, because some people have maybe mitochondrial dysfunction. So a ketogenic diet may present that. So you go keto and you're like, wow, I feel way more calm or I feel way better. And so that'll teach you a little bit about yourself. Paleo, I chose paleo as the other one because paleo is grain free. And a lot of people don't react really well to grains. So going paleo, it's not no, it's not low carb. I mean, you can have fruit in it. Yeah. Um, but it, it'll it'll present to people in the sense that they'll go, okay, you know, gluten and wheat and even certain starches don't feel good. I think I feel better eating this way. And then elimination is just very plain and straightforward. You would do a uh, a test to see what your food intolerances are. That's much more individualized. Remove those foods see how you feel. And then that's much more of an individualized, you know, type of approach. Well, I think universally, I think that one should be explored. Yes. Uh, and mainly just, good yeah, point because it's just in our current environment and what we're facing in terms of environmental toxins and um, in terms of intolerances to whatever, like you just need to learn and understand your body and how it best operates. Totally. And that's and why I like to run like my clients on like as many of them as I, I can. That's what you always say. And that's what made me yeah, think about this. Cause sure. I, I did this towards the end, but not a lot. Uh, but you said you did this a lot with yeah. the people you work with. I also, with. I mean, adding to the vegan argument, like you, uh, you, there's a lot of people that have issues with, with dairy. There's a lot of people that just don't eat enough servings of vegetables and yeah. fruit. And uh -huh. so, I think going in that dir extreme direction, you start to highlight some of the things. The key to all of them, in my opinion, though, is that, you know, as we're doing it as a coach and a trainer, I'm kind of, I and I'm getting feedback from the client. Totally. I'm helping them connect the dots to this is because we eliminated something or because we added something that you weren't doing before. Let's figure out what that is and let's not marry this quote unquote diet let's become aware of, oh, wow, when we eliminate grains, look how well your body does. Doesn't Now, it doesn't mean that we have to follow this exact paleo diet. Let's just m avoid grains and then try a more balanced diet that you like. like so that's the key. 100%. Yeah. I, I, I'm not making the case that everybody should follow these diets because these are the best diets for you. Right. Rather, each of them will possess some kind of a trait that will teach you about yourself. So the, the idea of doing this is not to find the best diet for yourself, but rather to follow it. And I would say you'd want to follow them for at least 60 to, to 90 days. Mm -hmm. Follow it and keep track of things you notice. Digestion, 
inflammation, athletic performance, yeah. mental performance, energy, and take notes and say, you know, because like I'll, I'll give use myself as an example. This, by the way, is not how everybody's going to work. This is just me. And I've said this many times on the show. Ketogenic diet for me is superior for mental performance. I just feel sharper, calmer, more stable, less ups and downs, less anxious, the whole deal, right? Just mentally, it's like the best mental performance diet. This is why when I go on other podcasts, I'll typically fast, which is a fast way to get into ketosis. Or if I'm really, you know, focused on it, I'll go ketogenic for five or six days before and then fast a day of, and I'm just better mental performance. In fact, I'm, I'm doing ketogenic now because we did the launch of our, of our trainer course. I was going to do live presentation to thousands of people. I wanted to feel sharp. It was in the afternoon when I typically crash. So now I've been keto for two weeks and I just noticed like mentally, athletic performance wise, not the best for me. Yeah. If I want the most strength in the gym, if I'm going to go hit a PR, or I'm going to work out and I want to show off or I want to get a crazy pump or whatever, I need to have some starches. I need to have some rice or some potato, some fruit. That's my best physical performance uh, type of workout. And then for gut health, for me, it's going to be more of an elimination diet, you know, yeah. type of deal. But, uh, you know, everybody's different. Like you mentioned vegan. Usually meat uh, is not an intolerance. However, I'll never forget this. I had a client. Um, he was an anesthesiologist, one of the smartest people I ever worked I with. You get bit by one of those Lone Star ticks. I don't know. It's a, so I didn't know that back then, yeah. that that could even be a thing. So I remember training him. And he was really smart, really, really smart guy. So I loved working with him. And he was super open. He would ask me questions. He had an incredible understanding of the human body. So it was this great uh, dynamic. And he kept, you know, he, he was telling me like, oh, you know, I don't know if I like meat. I don't know if it works for me. And back then I was like, no, dude, you got to eat meat. You got to eat protein. Everybody I work with does better. He went on one of those doctors without borders, like volunteer work. So he would go and he would provide anesthesia for eye surgeries and he would volunteer his services. And the, the, the village that he lived in was vegan for their religion. So he didn't eat meat at all. He was pure vegan. He came back and he was like, the best. He's like, dude, I feel amazing. <clears throat> He's like, I feel so good. I, you know, my digestion's better, less inflammation. Yeah. I had to eat meat again. Symptoms came back. He went off meat. He felt better. And that was the first time I was like, yeah, you know, what am I doing here? Of course, because people are so individual. He says he feels better. I got to believe him, you know, and that'll happen sometimes with certain things. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's going to be those sort of anomalies and, you know, people that, that react differently to, the, to different things like that. But I just think it's a smart practice in general. I think the majority of people don't realize that their everyday experience is very much in a high inflammation state. Yeah. Uh, inflammation is a necessary process in order to build muscle and to, you know, function, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, improving repair. metabolism, re repair. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, too, managing that – and getting inundated with like just low level stress constantly, you know, this is probably why a lot of people, when they go and they shift into some of these diets, they feel this like immediate sort of uh, counter uh, lowering of, of inflammation. Totally this is body. also why I would add in that category, even though I don't think any of us would approve of it as a quote unquote diet, but fasting yes. is why yeah. I always yes. would teach a 24 to 72 hour fast, because I think it's important for people to just disconnect and see, Oh wow. How much of this is you are truly hungry? How much of this is, really cravings and to your point like look what happens as soon as we cut all this food out all this inflammation comes down yeah you Which know what else too adam is that uh humans evolved probably well we definitely ate seasonally you know so I, I know that there was a general like category of foods that we probably ate all the time but it wasn't like that all the time in other words winter we probably ate more of these types of things yeah, yeah. spring we ate more of these fall more of this summer more of this because we didn't, you know, for most of human history, we didn't have agriculture. We didn't raise, uh, you know, domesticated animals. So it, it's probably- Nature provides nutrients when, like for what exactly you need. It's already is, there. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I know. The, so other, the other thing that would be interesting too, I wonder what percentage of people that report how great they feel on this diet is truly due just to, a, the, it, because it's restrictive, it puts them in a massive calorie deficit. Oh, great point. Like, like they've never been, haven't been a deficit. Right. Years, like you're you know. just kind of eating whatever. And then all of a sudden your friend, oh, you got to try this paleo yeah. diet. Oh, you got to try this vegan diet. Oh, and then they do it and they're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But really all they did was they they took their, you know, 500 to 1,000 calorie surplus that they're consistently in. And now for four days in a row, they've been in a 400 calorie deficit. Such a great <laughs> point. In fact, there was a guy totally. that did a post that's going viral right now where he did a comparison diet, one with quote unquote healthy carbs, the other one with quote unquote 
unhealthy carbs like cookies and sugar and candy. And are they in a deficit? Both of them in a deficit. Yeah. Both yeah, of them of resulted in better blood markers, mm. lowered A1C and all these other things. So y that being said, what you're saying, Adam, uh, you can negate a lot of the negatives. Just by being low calorie. Just by being in a calorie deficit. Yeah. Now, the counter argument to that, which I'll always say is, Yes, your blood markers will look different. Behavior. But see how you feel and yeah. your cravings with yeah. those kinds of foods. I mean, that's, wasn't there a recent uh, article that came out about like Oreos yeah, that's and cholesterol? One. That's what you're talking about. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the that's always the point there. Like, I, I mean, I love, so our, our friends, Jordan Syatt and um, Lane Norton are notorious for making that case, right? Yeah. An argument, just your low, cal your low calorie is why you, you feel good. But I think that the missing piece to that, and this is just this is just because we've been doing this for so long, the experience of seeing what happens, like of just putting someone on a low calorie diet isn't quite enough because a lot of these hyper palatable foods <laughs> make you want more. And anybody who's ever sat in front of a bag of chips or snacked on a, a box of candy, like it's so hard to just eat one. Now there's granted, there are people, my wife is that way. Like she's an example of somebody who, if I was coaching her to get ready for a show and I had to keep her in these calories, I could find a way to program, you know, a piece of chocolate yeah. in there. Like, and she would be fine because she can do that. She could have a piece and resist it. I'm not that way. If it's in my house and I, I, I break the seal, it's on. In totally. fact, I have this, I have this even worse. I was talking to my, uh, my, my mom's husband this weekend and he's we were talking about eating habits and stuff like that and they had lost a bunch of weight because he uh, he was uh, pre-diabetic and stuff and we're talking about uh, our behaviors around food and i he had something very similar to me this this ridiculous logic that we we muster up in our head that oh if i open it up i'll just crush it and get it done so i won't pick at it and eat it and be eating this bad <laughs> yeah, food yeah, yeah. For, it's like so like i know it's not a good idea yeah. not, but yet you tell yourself that like oh i'm just gonna get it and then I'm, that's it i'm not gonna have any more in here. Yeah. yeah versus like oh just go have a little bite yeah. and be done with it like you you justify this behavior of like oh i'm just gonna just get it out you yeah know? the example i'll give is like we'll sit in front of the tv with a big bag full of boiled plain potatoes versus a big bag of potato <laughs> chips see which one you end up eating more while yeah. watching tv both have them potato both potatoes. In fact, the potato chips are higher in calorie, yeah. but you'll crush the potato chips because they're designed to make you over. So how much of it do you think in terms of it being behavioral and associated associations versus like an actual chemical like craving? You can't separate them. I, you can't separate well, it, but I, I, I like I mean, the I like the question. I think it's stronger of chemical not. wise. I definitely think that it's the it's the way it's designed. Is way more Here's powerful why I, than then than like associate like because also you build bacteria that then like reinforces like here's, the cravings. Yes, yeah. Here's why I, I say you can't separate them. Your associations affect your neuro uh, your neuro development and how your brain responds to things. So that's the physiological response. So you can't separate them. I mean, if it was all neurochemical, right? No, then I, not then obesity would actually be quite solvable. With, uh, with totally, yeah, with that, medication. That's why it's complicated. I just, it's interesting to me to think like, you know, chicken egg kind of thing. It's like, which super, one? this is why, like, like, now there's a, there's a lot of products that are, I, there was a gum, I think I saw a liquid or a pill one time that are kind of floating around and to change the flavor. Yes. Yeah. And, and I wonder, I mean, I wonder if we get here with science where you could imagine if you could program. You know all your vices, right? I know my uh, ice cream, you know, peanut butter, these like, I have like, yeah. like seven things that I know if I over it, get these certain candies, right? And imagine you could program a pill that whenever you have those, it gives you this awful response. It yeah. just makes you nauseous or it doesn't taste good. You'll find something else. I mean, you probably yeah. would, but right. I wonder how, how effective that would be at the initially getting somebody to stop eating those plus foods. that kind of sucks because it's like it, you know wouldn't you rather get in a place where you can enjoy those but you have like, of course well that is ideal right yeah. like you have like restrictions you know, on your behavior you know people, i mean that's what we do i mean i don't yeah. there's i'm not ever i'm not, not like, having the foods sucks. i love yeah to like you see know, ice cream and then just be like oh like you want to throw up dude, look, <laughs> look at gastric bypass there's people who get gastric bypass who are physically limited from overeating uh -huh. and will still gain the weight back because they'll stretch out that little pouch I worked with yeah, someone. Yeah, where there's like that. a will, there's a way. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. You got to work on the, the psychology of it. Today's giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, our new trainer course is live right now. This is for trainers and coaches. 
We teach you how to build your business. We teach you to be more successful, how to make more money, how to run things, how to get clients better results. And because it's a new launch until the end of the month, here's what you'll get by signing up. You'll get a free Maps Prime program, free Maps Prime Pro. You get to attend a live lead generation masterclass. You get all 11 Maps mods workouts for free, all 13 Maps guides for free. You get $200 off and then you get hooked up and put into a private group for trainers and coaches. If you're interested, go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com, use the code 200 off. Also, we've put together four workout program bundles for everybody. All of these are multiple programs put together in a bundle discounted 300 to $350 off. Here's what they are. The body transformation bundle, the new year, the new to weightlifting bundle, the new year extreme intensity bundle, and the body transformation bundle 2.0. All of those are available if you click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of psychology, I got to tell you guys a hilarious story. You guys will think it's funny, but I, I didn't think it was funny at all. <laughs> so this is the last year of the father-daughter dance that uh, my that I'm going to have with my daughter. That's scheduled by the school. Now I'm going to do it every year because it's a tradition. Okay. But she goes to a um, like a elementary school, middle school. So now she's in eighth grade. She'll be leaving next year to go to college. But ever since she High was- school. Ever since she was, yeah, she'll be going to high school next year. I know you said leave the yeah, college. college. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, high school, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, ever since she was in kindergarten, every year we do a father daughter dance. Right. And you guys know how big of a deal this is for me. I, I, I try to show her the perfect date because my strategy is to make it impossible for a douchebag to date to date her later on. Like, you know, I show up, open doors for her, I bring her a gift, I do the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the last year, and I'm going all out. I got a, I got a limo. I'm doing the whole thing. We're putting all the friends and dads in there. We're going to have a great time. And every year there's a theme. I remember it's an elementary school, junior high. So typically the theme is more uh, catered to the elementary school kids. Okay. So the theme is Barbie. So it's pink, it's Barbie, <laughs> the whole deal. Okay. So we're all going to wear pink and do the whole thing and, uh, and have a blast. Nice. Right. So I'm organizing this with my ex-wife and my wife on what I'm going to do. I showed them the limo. I was trying to find a pink one. Couldn't find one. That's fine. Regular limo. And I'm like, you know what would be cool is if I put like gifts in there for all the girls. And so my ex-wife's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, what if we had like a bag and then we put a Barbie in there and then it said like, you know, last father daughter dance or class of whatever. And we put it in there. And my ex-wife's like, she's not a little girl anymore. They don't want Barbies. She's like, <laughs> and then they all, both of them, my wife and my ex-wife start laughing at me. Uh, and my ex-wife's like, she, she, she literally is asking me to go to Coachella with me. <laughs> and my, my heart came out of my body. I, yeah, like, I, mean, I don't want to recognize that. Yeah. No, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm like, she's 14. Right? She's about to turn 15. Right. I'm thinking of giving them Gosh, Barbies. She's 15 already. That's bro. So crazy to me. And then I remembered how I was when I was 15. And I, now that's my daughter. Oh, no. Yeah. I immediately, massive. Like, even now, yes. talking about my hands are sweating. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't <laughs> yeah, want to I grow mean, this, up, dude. this literally oh, is like the big transition year for like <sighs> her growing, growing up. I didn't she, realize she's already. She's like interested. putting together a, a playlist of music so they can listen to the limo. And it's all like. Does she turn 15 or is she about to turn 15? She'll turn 15 this year. Mm -hmm. And it's all like, the music's like explicit, gangster <laughs> rap, fuck, you know what I mean? I'm like, you listen to hey, all. Bro, the fact that you re you refer to the music as explicit is funny. Dude, dude. She wants to listen to that explicit music. It's crazy. Yeah. Doug, see, yeah. Doug, Doug knows his daughter's already, she's already going to turn 18, so he's already been in the state. Yeah. It's terrifying. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's so scary. Man. I think I think the most terrifying thing is knowing what men are like. That's probably the hardest part. Because yeah. both of you have really <laughs> yes. good girls. You both have really good girls. I mean, so imagine, I mean, there's dads out there right now that have the kind of rebellious girl at this age. And maybe she has some, both have a little bit rebellious tendencies, but they're not truly rebellious. Like I remember my sister was rebellious, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, when, the, she, I, when she hit about that age, it went, all black, black eyeliners, oh, smoking God. cigarettes, <laughs> hanging out with skaters. Like, I mean, my sister went super goth. Yeah, yeah. well, she just went hard rebellious. You know, oh, she, yeah. she was like this like sweet little rock. innocent yeah. girl. And then now she's hanging out with these dudes yeah. and dressing. I mean, so I have you could have that me. on your hands and imagine how mm -hmm. that is as a dad. Bro, I literally have it inside <laughs> me. Not that I would do this, but it's there. Maybe I would. If that happened to my girl, I'd be the crazy dad that would show up and just 
just assault every dude hanging out with her. So they'll never want to hang out <laughs> oh, with her. God. You know Not I mean? a good it's idea. In me. Not a good idea. Yeah, you know Not you make idea. that worse. You wouldn't do that. You know you wouldn't. Oh, do that. I don't know. Yeah. I'd lose my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like handcuffed her to me. Now I mean, stuck. the funny part yeah. is my sister really wasn't a bad girl either. It's just they they get to that kind of age where of they course. want. Of course, they have to find their independence. Yeah, yeah and they know. you know pushing the limits a little bit. I mean, so I think both. She's got. It's funny because she's got like a like the side of me that's like like. I was dropping her off at school. I don't remember what happened exactly. It was something like the, the teacher gave her like these crazy assignments and she was like stressing out over this test or whatever. And there's a side of her that I've now identified and I didn't identify it earlier because shame on me, she's a girl. So I thought, oh, she's going to be a certain way. No, no, no. She's got that side of me. So I, you know, I'm pulling up to school. She's kind of stressed out, whatever. And I'm like trying to talk her, you know, like, hey, it's okay. You'll be fine. She don't want to hear it. You know, she's like, oh, I'm listening to my music. You know, she's all like in her mood. So then I, we we stop we pull up to drop off. She takes her earphones off, her headphones off, or whatever. I look at her. And I go, I'm like, maybe you know, maybe this will work. So I look at her. and go, go fucking kill it. You're a champion. And she's like, yeah. She gets out of the car. I'm like, yeah, I figured it out. She's just like me, dude. So now I know how to talk to her. If, if okay, if you and Doug, you guys have one one trait that you for her to have that's really strong, or that you pass down, or you develop, whatever. If you only have one, what's the one you think that has the best carryover? Oh, one trait. You get one trait that you're gonna like. She's gonna be th this, like for sure. She's gonna have a strong that we see already, or that we wish? no. You don't have to see it. You oh. to, you, you, she could have it already. She could not have it. But if you like, if you were to desire, you get a genie, right? And I'm like, you get what you can. One trait. I got it. I can guarantee she's gonna have. What is that one I, trait? Growth minded. For Growth sure. Mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was always, I've always seeked out trying to be a better, not always successful, obviously, but that's the one trait I hope she, cause that'll always, that means she's always going to, she'll always do, improve or she'll look for growth. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mine is probably a little more selfish in that I want to protect her, yeah. but I want her to be her own person yeah. and not follow the so crowd. Independent. Independent. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's good. But also a self thinker. Um, and I, she's proving to be that way actually, Very which much. is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I said I made a comment about how knowing how men are. I should have been more you know, clarified that a little bit. How certain boys and men are, because yeah. not everybody's that way. Right. Right. Because she has a boyfriend right now. Yeah. And this kid is actually a really good kid. She's always every time we've met a guy that she's either dating or been around. They've always been. If good they're anything choices. like her dad, she's going to be with a great guy. Yeah, I think that. I mean, that they say that's the the most important thing you could as a dad of a daughter is that right? Is yes. to be that be that example because she's going to want. That or better, right? I heard someone say that a, a girl will put up with the worst that her father has shown her. Mm. So if it's he's violent, loud, whatever, she'll put up with that. Or if he's distant, not connected, she'll put up. So whatever the worst she sees in her dad, that's is a what really she'll, interesting. She'll put up with. Uh, that's got to be true. It's got to be so true. I mean, all the people I know, you know, that I, I can, I kind of make sense. It kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. I don't know how true that is, but no, I, like I believe that. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, that's interesting. I've I've always said. So people ask me that, like with Max, right? And uh, confidence is what I'd say. I think so much is rooted mm -hmm. in fear and insecurity. Yeah. So so much of like, especially kids' behaviors, the stuff that they choose to do is a lot of times because they're scared or insecure. And if he's ultra confident in himself and who he is, Dude. a lot of the other things I feel like fall into. You place. just reminding me what I've been. And reading. I always told them about self belief. Yeah, self confidence, that's right? That's same, what that is. same exact. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Well, you yeah. guys are already doing a great job. Your kids are great. I, I've been learning a lot about attachment theory, just for myself, and um, I, I'm not I, even close to an expert on it, so I'm going to mess some of it up. But a lot of how you relate to relationships in the world is developed in like the first three years of your life. Hmm. And it was three years. Three years. Interesting. Hmm. The way your brain literally shapes itself. Now, there are other times when you'll start to develop more of this. I think it's like the first three years, and then adolescence is the other part time when the brain is super hyperplastic. But basically, how you relate to your caregivers is how you then learn to relate to the world. So I learned about myself. I am what's called a fearful avoidant. Uh, I have a fearful avoidant attachment style. So this comes from a bit chaotic, not knowing what to expect. And it develops these tendencies where I either want to pull in real close or pull away. So I have these extremes, right? I either want to be hyper-independent or hyper-close. But there's other ones too. There's the avoidant. There's the anxious attachment. And you learn this through childhood. And then when you read it and learn about it, you'll start to find like, oh shit, that's that's why I do what I do. That's why I feel the way that I do. Yeah. But it's developed when you're a kid. That's interesting. It's in the first three years. I didn't know that. Yes, dude. Wow. Yes. Wow. So like if you're, if you grew up in a household where it's a bit unpredictable, sometimes you get lots of love. Sometimes you get like detachment or there's a little bit chaos. 
you're, you're you could be hyper vigilant. You could both crave closeness, but also fear it. And so you'll do this pull, push, pull thing with all the relationships in your life. And oh, you'll have a tendency to cut things off, which is me. I'll be friends with someone. They'll do one thing, <laughs> never talk to you again. I wonder if that's what saved me, right? Because most of my, when we, when we refer back to like, my my childhood stuff it's most of it's seven beyond right so before my dad died my life was yeah. to what i remember uh, fairly normal right or healthy or good right balance of both parents and dad loving me mom loving me and stuff like that the chaos really started at mm -hmm. seven on so i wonder that's interesting i didn't know that i didn't I yeah thought, attachment theory has been studied for decades i did not know it's really fascinating well it's not fully adopted by every therapist like it's kind of like one of those things that some are some are pro and some agree and then some of them it's think pretty, it's a bit woo woo or don't whatever they know. I think it's like rudimentary or it's like a very it's like an entry level and then they go like they just it's, like discard it's it pretty established it. it's very it's, i think it's got 100 years of, uh, of study but i think no well maybe it's very less. established but it's not something that like all teach from or or because or, there's a lot of individual people are individuals sure and, sure and like so even what you're saying Saying, like you're categorizing, you have like five categories. Like, well, let's be honest, individuals are so much totally. people are so much more unique. Than totally. Just that. Yeah. But once you learn about some of the stuff, like I am, I'm starting to figure out, figure myself out. And then what happens is I'll, I'll have these strong feelings. Now I'm identifying where they're coming from, and so I attach less meaning to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas before I put meaning to it, like, oh, this means whatever. And I'm like, oh, I know why I'm feeling like that. So let me just chill for a second and kind of see what's going on. And you can kind of reprogram yourself around that. Really interesting stuff. I watched this one video. And I was literally watching it and I'm like, I felt, uh, what's the word I want to use? Like, uh, exposed. Like I'm watching it and I'm like, uh, oh shit. <laughs> uh, that looks familiar. She's calling me out the whole fucking time. Well, like a 20 I, minute video. I mean, the, the attachment Adam was such a really, yeah. I mean, that was such a great relationship and the, of, of all the podcast interviews and, and people we've talked to and stuff like that, that one probably made the, the biggest impact on Katrina and I. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was the only episode we've ever, I've never, you know that? I've never sat with Katrina and watched a full mind pump episode before really? until that episode. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was super impactful. The biggest one for her and I was the um, the love and respect thing. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. Katrina yeah. is- That's so true, uh, yeah. Katrina yeah. is so unbelievably loving and like so good about, I love you and telling me that. Like she's like so, so good about that mm -hmm. stuff. And like I've- I, and it's, I always have told her like, I mean, it's nice, but I really don't care. I mean, you like it, but yeah, it's not the, it's, yeah, it's not a big deal to me. Yeah, not yeah. like it is to her. Like you see that, like it right. lights her day up. If I am good about doing those things, like you could tell it changes her completely. And I really could never put my finger on that. I thought maybe, oh, I'm, I'm broken and she's, <laughs> she's healthy in the way it's supposed to be. And it's like, oh no, like I desire respect far more than I, extreme too. Like it's not even in the same mm -hmm. universe. She could not tell me I love you for a year and it wouldn't be a big deal to me, but make me feel respected every day and I'm on top of the world. Yeah. Like that was a, and I think her seeing that and realizing that like, wow, she puts in all this work and effort to show and do that. And yet it's not, it's not getting any credit for me. Right. And yet the things that really mm -hmm. matter, those moments were, okay, here's a moment where I want to feel respected. Like, can you see those and her being able to recognize that now? And then me also, right. Re recognizing that, that, that is so powerful for her to show the, the love. Yeah. Part, once you, know? you learn and I'd say once as if it's easy, but once you kind of figure yourself out and then figure out your partner, then you're, you can be less reactive and you can take things less personal. That's the big one is like, you know, they'll act a particular way. And if you don't necessarily know what it's coming from, it's very easy to take a personal, like, Oh, you're distant today. Screw you. You know, but then you realize like, Oh, I, I understand what happens now while you're feeling distant. You require space. You just don't know how to ask for it. Mm -hmm. So the way that you, you do it is you just kind of become distant. And then when you give it to them, then you find them come back. And that's like one silly example. Yeah. But I think that's, uh, you know, that's key. You know, speaking of relationships, uh, I'm super, super excited to talk about this. We, you know, since we started this podcast, uh, we've always been really transparent with our partnerships and relationships and everything we on. It's been such a cool, uh, wild journey. I mean, we, we were very blessed and lucky that when we built this, that we didn't depend on partnerships. We early on agreed like, oh, we weren't going to do any advertising. And if we did do any advertising, they would be you know, partnerships that we sought after mm -hmm. or companies that we really loved and like, and we were just going to build it slow like that. And it's so cool to see where it's come, you know, from the very beginning and to see us now partnered with a company like NASM Bro. is so yeah it's full circle. Yeah. This is, it, this is like it has personal. nothing to do with the money or anything like that. It has everything to do with like how 
crazy and full it, circle this it, is for me as a trainer. It was the first. Totally. It was the first legit certification I got. They taught me a lot of the basics on mm -hmm. biomechanics, anatomy. You know how to train people, program design, yeah, assessment. Um, they're so well respected. They're the number one national cert, right? In terms of just reach and whatever, the most well respected. So for me, it would be like, it would be like working with 24 fitness or something. It was so full circle. It's so it, it means so much more to me, at least than just, you know, that we're working with and, a, a national. Cert. And they're so particular about how they advertise or who they partner with that. It was like, that wasn't even in a possibility when we first started, like just, just to get recognized by them too. feels cool. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. No, that was really, it was really, really cool for that. And the way it all for the audience, so they know how it played out. We were in Olympia with Transcend and NASM had a booth and the two guys that were running the booth had came over and just were like, oh my God, huge fan of the show, this and that. And we're like, really? Like, <laughs> we would love to have worked with NASM. And we had talked to them a couple years back and it just, fell off. It was like, they oh. didn't understand new media at all. Right? Yeah. They weren't in the podcasting space at that time. No new media. Did, they didn't get didn't it. understand mm -hmm. like how the advertising worked. And so it just never happened. And then for it to have come full circle, we had a great dinner with them and uh, you know, and here we are now doing uh, well, advertising. What's crazy to me. Cause so we sat down with one of the reps, had a great dinner, great discussion. And the problem that they have, and I realized this, you guys remember like 30 minutes in, I was like, Oh God, this is a big problem we could solve. Yeah. He was explaining all the different courses yeah. that NASM offers. So, so everybody, many. everybody knows NASM is a national cert, and it's one of the best ones. And we're not just saying this because we're sponsored. You can listen to all of our episodes going back to oh. number one. We've but, recommended them as the foundational uh, certification. Forever. In, forever. forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Before. basically the first thing you go to do. Yeah, that's just, so this is legit. We've always respected them. He was going through all the courses and I was like, you guys do what? Yeah, you guys yeah. do that? You, and I looked at him, I said, you guys have a problem. And he said, what? And I said, nobody knows. Trainers don't know that you offer these different types of courses. All they know is your CPT and your correctional exercise. They don't know you have all these other courses and services and apps and stuff to help trainers. And he's like, I know, I know. This is one of the reasons why we're considering working with someone like you. So, so I have their, so I have their, NASM's their obviously their basic CPT model, and then I had what was, and I don't know if it's what if it the acronym or what it's titled now. Correctional know, exercise. No, no, no. I have that one too. Oh, okay. I was going to say their sports performance one. So it used to be uh, uh, PES. Yeah. The so they had a PES, and then it, specialist yeah, or, and then it turned to like a, SFS or something like that. I don't uh -huh. know if it's still the same. Right. Um. And, but by far the CES was one of the Easy. most powerful certifications, Easy. and I was so upset. That it took me, I want to say it was like year seven when I finally got that certification. Same. And I That's wish so someone weird. would have told me, after, as soon as you get your basic CPT, next thing, go to that corrective exercise specialist. Because when you hear us talk about uh, imbalances and, and being able to look at somebody's squat and know what's going on, and then building a program around that, that the value in that and the ability to be able to do that in the first time meeting somebody like yeah. let me tell you when you i, I sold you more personal training people. being able to have somebody in front of me squat down 10 15 times and be able to tell them what's going on with their body and then go on the floor and show them a couple of movements and then feel immediate relief or improvement mm -hmm. that is you can't do that with like like fat loss and muscle building, which is what most people typically come to a personal. That takes months. Yeah, you, you forever, and so you're you're presenting them what you're gonna do, but being able to show somebody how they move, or if they have like say chronic pain in certain areas, and it's because of a way they move, and then go over and show them corrective exercises to help alleviate that or potentially eliminate that, they can see that um, immediately. You build value. There's there's nothing more effective. I talk about this in our course. So in our trainer course, I make that case. Like if you want to sell training, learn correctional exercise, because in an assessment, you can show someone, you can show nine out of 10 people with chronic pain, some pain relief with the properly, with properly applied correctional exercise for that individual. Yeah. And you'll blow their mind. They'll you hire massive you. massive buy-in. They'll hire you on the spot. Uh, it's by far the most, uh, of, logistically speaking, uh, you know, certifications teach you things like biomechanics. Uh, anatomy, exercise application, that kind of stuff, right? They don't really teach you building your business, that kind of stuff, but they teach you kind of the, the foundational logistical stuff. The Na NASM correctional exercise specialist mm -hmm. one of all the ones I've taken, all the course I've taken, that's the one I've, I've used the most. Yes. Hands down. Five for sure. In fact, 
if you were a trainer and you were to tell me what would be the perfect education to put together, what would be the perfect education that would set me up? I'd say, get your NASM CPT. You required that before you can get CES. So go NASM CPT, CES, and then get our trainer course. If you did those three, I'm going to say right now, it would be great to learn other things, which you can always do. You don't need to learn anything else though. You've, you are, you've got such a solid base on how to apply exercise, correctional exercise, assessments, and then with our course, how to build your business, how to communicate to clients, how to get through those sticking points. Like you'd be done. That would be it. You'd be set. You'd be yeah. set with your business. Speaking of that, it's been so cool. I, I mean, I, it's been a, I've always enjoyed every day coming to work. This is the only thing I've ever done in my life that nine years later, I'm just as excited, but there's like, there's definitely a different energy right now in the studio and in the business with oh, the, yeah. the coaching side. It was so cool to see because, you know, so the audience knows too, there was like, a, there was a lot of pressure and stress from us. Like we're, we're starting a new business. We're putting out the most expensive product that we've ever put out before. Like, and of course the, like we wanted to like over deliver so that everybody's like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever invested in. And so even the three day free event that we did leading up to it, there was a lot of pressure of like, Hey, we got, let's, yeah, let's really yeah. deliver on this. And we talked a lot about what, it, what, it, what, what could we give in an hour's time? It's got to be substantial. Yeah. That know. would actually really help people. And it's been so cool to see already the coaches that have had seen, like, I just closed my first $2,700 yeah. deal. I was like, I literally the next from, day from the free information <laughs> that we gave yeah. leading into the course, that was like a real good feel good moment for me of like knowing like, okay, it's all and knowing that everything that we're gonna do going forward to bolster this thing. So it's right. like, here's where it's at already. And then okay, now we take all the feedback from the coaches and trainers. What more do you want in it? And we just continue to bolster. Yeah, this. it's like it's like now they have that tool. It's like they, they didn't have that before. And this is just a discipline thing from here on out as to how far they want to take it. You yeah. know, and it's so it's so great to see people actually like, you know, writing notes, really taking all that information, putting it right into action and, and getting a, a good result. Yeah, I told Justin, I get to ask you, you said sent me a clip of a podcast yesterday that talked about the location of the pyramids and <laughs> all that. Do you remember what that said? It was pretty remarkable. First of all, who's that podcast? What's the guy's name? Oh, uh, you're talking about the Sean Ryan one? Is that one? So Sean Ryan was was interviewing this guy, uh, Billy Carson, I believe. Okay. Yeah, he, he's... I think he's called uh, uh, Forbidden Knowledge. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talked about the placement of the pyramids, okay. how it's perfectly in the center of landmass. He goes, the only way yes. you could possibly calculate that is with some kind of satellite that would measure the, topogra the topographics of the earth and figure that. So it was also the average, the height of the pyramids is the average of all of the peaks and valleys in the world. He goes, yeah. the only way you can figure this out it, and I know this about the pyramids. Yeah. The only way you can figure this out is if you had some kind of like, like you know, satellite imagery and calculations. Pretty yeah. Graham Hancock talks about this too, and it's like there's so many formulas and uh, that you can extract from like the Great Pyramid of Giza, uh, and just that by itself. And it's so like they they're like how how did they figure all this out in terms of like all of the math and everything that goes into it like the basically the distance you know between us the moon like yeah. e even like you know the milky way and the sun and like all of these like calculations you can extract you know from some of the measurements within the pyramid and the stone and, and it just makes you think and so the way he described it was like a uh somewhat of like a uh, uh, like a stone computer in terms of what they encoded. They encoded information deliberately within so the, what these is, building structures. What does the pyramid have to do with the moon and the Milky Way? So when they figure out, it's, it's, there's a, it's a, a perfect formula for um, like the square root of the distance or something like that. Like the math fits for so many different things in our galaxy and on our planet with the placement and size of the, of the pyramid itself that they're like the odds that they would randomly build a pyramid yeah. and it would match all these things is, is impossible. So like the centimeter, like, you know, and some yeah. of these measurements of meters and things like where really? they- Really? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's really hard to articulate, but like the, he does a great job of articulating all of, like the why of-, of So uh, the other thing too is, uh, is it just the Sphinx or is it the pyramids as well that have water erosion signs on it? It's the Sphinx is what they've found for the most part. So, so it's like water erosion, right? Do you know when water was in Egypt? 
way before the Egyptians. Mm. So the argument is that the Sphinx was there well before the Egyptians. Yeah. Like they went and they Which saw Egyptologists it. Egyptologists are refuting, but yeah. yeah, like it's Robert Schock. I it was the, uh, science or the, uh, um, geologist, I mm. believe that, uh, like looked at that and was like, you know, the, compared it to other water erosion in, in stone and other like uh, areas of the world. It was very similar to water erosion and presented it and actually got a lot of like uh, accolades and credit from geologists. But then, you know, the archaeologists and the Egyptologists like refuted it. Well, there's just so much we're guessing. Like- well, because if they, if you don't, if they don't, it kind of, just throws a, a wrench in everything Destroys else. Destroys all the theories. All your built, history. They built everything sucks. off of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's so much. Why don't, guessing. Car- why don't they just carbon date it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not yeah. real. What's that? What's that? Uh, that? Uh, how do they measure? So they have this new way of measuring. It's some kind of radar where they can fly over an area, dense jungle, but then they can pick up. Yeah. The uh, topography of structures and stuff under the jungle, and right. so. There's like dense jungle that we've never explored that now they could using satellites see, oh, there was a civilization like there. Oh, there's pyramids. Oh, there's cities. Structures they found in South America. Yeah, dude. Hundreds. Really? There's, there's so little yeah. we know of past human yeah. existence. Like the theory that they come up with is that like there were definitely advanced civilizations that have been wiped out. Yeah. That existed because we think of human history as like hunter gatherers for most of human history. I mean, I say that all the time. Right. But a lot of them are like, no. They were like, like we're just advanced. recreating what, and rediscovering what we've uh, known like way beyond what we've we've uh, thought is the beginning of our timeline. Yeah. And then you connect that to like religious spiritual practices. Like they talk about uh, the Anunnaki and mm-hmm. these fallen angels that taught humans uh, forbidden knowledge, like astronomy metallurgy and stuff like that. And mm. you know, that, that, you know, that I knew you were going to like it. <laughs> just it's just like, the ocean. Just like Sal's going to geek out on this is <laughs> me. Adam is totally not. No. Yeah, no, that's, right. I gotta be high for that stuff. It, it you totally. get me high. I'll definitely go. Yeah. For that stuff. <laughs> what, like, why yeah. is that? By the way, I don't know. Why, why is he getting into weird shit with it? Maybe Everybody's cause, like that. Maybe right? cause it just, it opens your mind more. Maybe you're just like more, more open to ideas and what like that, or maybe you're, I'm more stubborn if I'm not. Like, yeah. Oh no, that's bullshit. Yeah. Like that. You ever seen this people- Billy Carson guy? That was Trips me out, yeah. dude. What, the the amount of of stuff he knows. I don't even know these guys you're talking about right now. Where, I've never heard of them watching either. these guys. Justin showed me. Yeah, Con- it's, conspiracy well, channel you, you, that I don't know about. No, <laughs> well, actually, I've, I've, mean, I've heard a little bit about him. The you know, truth from, channel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like guy, you know that one channel? Like it's called Gaia or whatever. It has yeah, like all yeah, these yeah. wacky ideas on there. Uh, sometimes I'll check that out. I think he has a show in there, but. Um, uh, Sean Ryan, so you you know his podcast, right? He's like an ex, like a Navy military State, guy. Military guy. Oh, oh, oh I think he I does do. great interviews. Anyway, I, I like his show a lot. He should actually be our shout out, but uh, he does he does great interviews. But he, I think what I like about him is he'll ask like very simple, like straightforward questions, and then you know sit back and kind of let them get into like crazy detail yeah. nuance, and, and so it's like, you know, he asks a lot of questions I want to know. Well. Dude, this so oh, yeah, along these this, lines. I know who this guy is. Okay, so along these lines. In fact, I was talking to my cousins this morning, and they were having we were on this great. I don't know why early mornings they get into these weird discussions, but my cousins like you know it's 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 probably likely we're living in a simulation, and so they're going back and forth. Or I follow them. Yeah, and I said because I there was this one physicist uh, who's also a priest, by the way, who broke down the odds that the universe came from nothing. They did the math. They've didn't they've done the math. This is actually somewhat established uh, physics. The odds that the universe started from nothing, which means time and space came from nothing. And they'll even argue that. They say that before the Big Bang, they'll say time and space didn't exist. So nothing created something. Mm-hmm. He did. The, they did the math. And I think it was Stephen Hawking's, uh, you know, that guy that went to Epstein. Oh, <laughs> he came up with some of these numbers. The uh, odds, the odds that something that everything came from nothing. The precision of that is un. Well, the yes yeah. is is equivalent to a monkey randomly hitting a keyboard and writing every book ever published perfectly without a single mistake. He said mm. it's actually the odds are great are are better for that than the universe coming from nothing. So I said that to my my cousin, and he looked it up and he's like, "That's weird." I said, "So." What's more, because he was like, well, the probability that God exists is, I said, you know what's funny? When you look at the numbers, which one seems more logical? That there's like this God beyond everything or that everything came from nothing? And he's like, huh, 
That's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. When you really think about it, you know? It's weird. It's wild shit. Dude, uh, quantum entanglement's just as weird. Oh. I'm not even going to try and explain it. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> insane. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, we, oh, you know what we should bring up? Mark Bell. Did we talk about his podcast getting taken off? Uh, we did not. Oh, you did not on the show. Oh, I thought he did. Talk Dude. About, we were talking about so, so his much whole today. podcast, oh. which had decent amount of views, subscribers, a big pod. He's one of the bigger podcasts in the fitness space. Uh, what's it called? Power project. So Wiped he, off. YouTube. Powercast, yeah. Powercast. Taken off YouTube. Completely. Now does he, has he came out and talked about yep. what he attributes it to? He doesn't know. They he, gave him no warning. They gave them nothing. They just had a letter. He doesn't know because you know why? Because he he pushes the limits with a bunch of stuff. That's why he's uh, he does. A it lot could be of, anything. He does a lot of political commentary that well, he he, yeah. he talks started out about. with his race to the bottom. He right? sells kratom, which is gray market stuff. What else has he done on there that's like edgy? He's well, he's posted he's pro links. meat, which is like really bad right now. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yes, I mean you're just he's just uh, he's just flirting. So with I all talked the, I talked to him huh. and I said I said to him and he's you know he's a really calm like pretty cool guy or whatever. And I said, we're probably going to see more of this because election, it's election year. Every yeah. year, election year, since last the last two, people will get kicked off social media faster and faster. Uh, yeah, you see the censorship really ramp up. Ramp the hell yeah. up. And so- I mean, I- Bro, that's I'm scary. still I'm still not- Because there's, there's podcasts and stuff I can find right now on YouTube that are I way know, worse. I know, but I'm still convinced that it's just like, so much of this stuff is put on an algorithm to where it goes- like, you know, it's a warning. Say he, right. he says certain things, whether it's political, whether it's uh He got great no market. warning, he says. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I think they, they see it get hit enough or enough people uh, will well, it's report probably you. a lot of the people reporting. Yeah. And also, too, but at the end of the day, it's 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 the uh, it's a group of, you know, people dedicated yes. towards that uh, specific uh, leg of the of the business that decide, oh, we get it. Well, that's right. I think I think there's this, again, a group of these people. The algorithm hits all of it, and then it gets f f yeah, lands then, on then their they Yes. present him. And it's like, oh, yeah. he's this guy's uh, been uh, reported for this. He's been reported for this. He's been reported for this. He also does this, and he's done that. Oh, fuck, get him off. Well, he. I think I literally think it's like that. I don't think there. I don't think there's like a team and of people that are like does scouring through the, his stuff, yeah. and they're just like, oh, we got to cancel well, him. Here's I, what we know: when uh, Elon bought Twitter, yeah, that for sure it's that yeah. Adam. For yeah. sure, they go in and they say, here are the keywords. This is what you're going to blacklist. This is what you're going to uh, make the algorithm reduce their view their viewership. And here's what the things that you're going to block. And these the Twitter files came out and showed explicitly yeah. that that's what they're doing. This is why it seems so hypocritical. Where you'll see one person get blocked. It was for something. an extreme bias too. Totally. And so he messaged them. They, they yeah, reached again, out, and YouTube okay. came back and said, "No, sorry." So again, though, and they didn't I, give him any specific. So again, though, it's. Uh it's a, a a company that owns. Oh, I'm not saying we should pass a law. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm just it's saying just like it's at, at the end of the day. Okay, I always try and and again, this is me playing devil's like It's not me agreeing with it. It's not me whatever so supporting the people that did this to him. But it's like uh, imagine that Mind Pump has the the power, the reach, uh, the 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 amount of eyeballs and attention as Google or YouTube has on it, and we are just inundated with uh, a. a, a millions okay of people that we don't align with we don't like that are what we think are toxic or we, like what do we do to potentially get rid of them out of our ecosystem that's not the point you're missing the point completely the twitter files showed explicitly and clearly that the government did through the back door oh, what okay. they can't do through the front door. I'm not even talking about that. That's I'm what talking, I'm talking about. Yeah, but again, the and YouTube's part of it. The, Google's part of it. It's a fact. We know this for a fact. This is not now a conspiracy theory. They literally go in and say, "Here's what you're going to do. Here's what you're not going to do. Here's what you're going to block, and here's what it's going to look like." So that is not a private company saying, "Eh, we like these." Well, we I mean, and then yeah, that's state that's outreach. called that's called that proposes another really something. You know, we're we're the size of Google. You know, we're making bajillions of dollars over here. Our families are all tied to this, and the government comes knocking on our door and says, "You do this, this, and this, or this goes away." What do you do? I I would like to think I'd be more like Elon and say like and do this and say this right here. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, but I don't know. And then put it out to the I mean, public so they're obviously aware. Obviously, I feel the same way too, but it's, you know, put in that position, it's a different story, right? I, right. I mean, it's not just you you're affecting either. It's now definitely a hard decision, you yeah. know, and like you'll see that where, uh, I mean, there was a sense of that even with like Zuckerberg and like going through all that stuff. It's like he didn't want to completely say, but he was like, he was very much pressured 
Uh, he seemed pretty stressed out, didn't he? He was very stressed out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very stressed out. It was affecting like all of the way that you know, he's handling everything in the business. Well, so. listen, we talked about this before. Like those guys, all of these guys are like libertarian. It's not like these guys are these like. Yeah, I don't think it was his intent to totally to, not to do that. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it was. What what, I don't think it was yeah. for Twitter guy either. He's as liberal or he's as like libertarian as they come. Oh, Dorsey, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Libertarian. So, all, but yeah. all of a sudden they have these authoritarian things that happen within their company. It's just like man, and then and imagine too. Okay, like you said, like you know, you be Elon, go fuck yourself. I hope I. Would. But I, you, I, I mean, you say that right? But then you also have. Uh, 50,000 employees yeah. Yeah. that that you've created a livelihood to that okay you're set because you've invested and you're this and that so you can say go yeah. fuck yourself and you're going to be fine challenging on your, position it is I mean, no but doubt. you know that you well, destroy so 50,000 know? middle class people's lives because you say go fuck yourself because yeah. you're not willing to budge for the now, I mean, you know you know I'm on the yeah. you, you know obviously I'm here because I'm not in that position so I can speak this way right right, right. But, and so this and this, now this is true though a lot of problems have happened because people have went along. Some of the biggest- It's travesties. a slippery slope, right? Yeah. So well, that's- The biggest travesties in history were because people literally just went along. It's literally how it goes. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, all I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is it's election season. Yeah. Shit gets heat. It's going to start heating it's, up and you're going to start- pressure more. is, yeah, definitely coming down. So yeah. speaking of that, do you- uh, so I, I heard someone say that they're one of their theories on, you know, obviously it looks like we're going to have a Biden versus Trump again, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, Trump for sure is he's, he's, the no sequel we him. nobody wanted, you know? Like, well, and like, it's oh, a yeah, Biden yeah. also, and Biden also, right? It's like this a movie. It's like a yeah. shitty movie. Yeah. It's like, come out with the sequel two. is even worse. A you know? shitty movie you have to watch. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you don't even Like, what's it. a really shitty movie you can think of right now? They're like, part two. Yeah, yeah. Fargo. Yeah. And you're all going to watch it, whether you like it or not. I mean, what is it? There is no other alternative than Biden. Waterworld Part Two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. They don't even have like a, 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 a maybe second choice. Biden, if he steps out or gets pushed out by his own party, then there is then they'll then they'll run a primary. Okay, but um, or if he dies, does that need to does that need to happen soon? No, no, that shit could happen up until the. I mean, the ideally they'll give it some time, but ideally what they want to do here's here's typically what they do they want to wait until. The last minute because the primary process damages a lot of the, the whoever the winner is going to be. Yeah, because they're sl they're all beating mudslinging yeah. with each other. So they want to kind of wait and then boom, enough time to like, okay, here's our guy or girl. That's the part I can't stand. You know, that's the part that is so hard for me to swallow with with politics is like even what we've seen right now with the right with everybody with the Trump like. All these guys, maybe Vivek was defend, defending Trump to a point, but DeSantis and all these people, they were fucking sling, yeah. mud slinging on him, and now they're it's all- It's the game. I know. Uh, so yeah. come on, dude. Uh -huh. Like, why didn't you stay that way from the beginning? I have more respect well, for you. that was Kamala and Biden. Remember that? Yeah. Like, yeah, they were like heated league back and forth. Like, she was throwing all kinds of shade on so, them, and all of a sudden- Brady's I wonder how many- I Vice president. Hey, okay, but take so, it a step further. How many people on the right and left behind closed doors are like that? 100%. Like, bro, you handled me. What Fist pump. I 100% fake world yeah, no, think that they're all, okay, it's your turn. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, we're yeah. going to, we're going to let you do And there's the, certain unwritten rules that maybe they don't cross, Yeah, you know, but then the rest is like, Hey, let's not talk about, we went to Epstein Island. Yeah, so sure. my, I yeah, told yeah. you about an unwritten rule. We all rule. can agree about that. I <laughs> told you about an unwritten rule that from somebody who has intimate knowledge of that. So yes, like that, that, I think that's true. That mo one of the things that you're not allowed to touch is like the, their real families. And that a lot of these fucking people that have ran for president, yep. like the family that we get presented is not even not like, even their real family no, no they got another fucking family somewhere else that they have kids with and they have and that this is their political family that is what is in the public's yeah. eye and that that's part of the game is like you don't go there well, did Biden you leave? messed up he should have got rid of <laughs> did, did, did you guys by the way did you guys see who is that guy soros not george soros but i think he's one of the soros family did a tweet or a post that, that now that a lot of conspiracy theories are like he's calling for Trump's assassination. Have you seen this? No. It was a oh post. My God. It was a post. Maybe look it up. It's I don't remember what his first name. Is. Oh, you, sh you show me. There was like it was a, a it was a it was, bullet, a, it was uh, bulletproof glass with the bullet glass. hole through it, and then it was money on the next one, and the money adds up to forty seven, which is. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. And everybody's like, he's calling for whatever. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I so know. I was bringing that up because I was going to ask you. I saw this. Someone put out this theory that uh, Biden is either – he's not stepping down, but he gets pushed out maybe. Yeah. And, They'll push uh, him out because he's – And he's, Michelle Obama goes. If Michelle runs and if she makes Gavin her VP, th then they'll win. I don't think uh, anybody could beat 
I don't think anybody could beat that. How late would they make a massive maneuver like that? Just before. I mean, they could do so it. So right supposedly before. she started to do podcasts. She's yeah. just all of a sudden starting this podcast yeah. circuit. Now yeah. I have no idea. I saw if they she's approach got a book the, or whatever. The Rock too. Yeah. Did you I mean, see that? No, I didn't see. It's that. all yeah. about. But I've all, I remember when I called that. That's on, that's on air like fucking Mich- six seven years ago. Michelle is liked probably as much or more than Obama. She's uh, a female. She's minority, articulate, you know, intelligent. She's associated with yeah. Her she's husband. beloved. But Everybody loves yeah, a lot of Gavin people. Slimeback garbage. Most people He's know this, the, the but a lot of people like a lot of people don't know him, and he presents himself pretty well. Plus, he's like a dude VP to the female press. Like it's like the perfect. Like if you were to write out, <laughs> like what am I gonna? You know what? What can I do that'll be hard to beat? It it would be that. That would be a just. I mean, God. Gavin, that would be oh, ter- Lord. Yeah, right Don't there. Alex Soros. Last year, the crime and inflation crisis largely evaporated. So did the leading theories about what had caused them. Bullet hole, and then forty-seven dollars, right there. Yeah. And uh, everybody's like, "What is he trying to say?" That's interesting. Weird, yeah. right? What a weird tweet. I mean, it is crime in dollars, but the fact that it adds up to, you know, forty-seven or whatever is kind of weird. So Dang. the question I have is: Is crime and inflation crisis largely evaporated? Yeah. Yeah. I tell that to the people down at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. That's crazy. I know. But I love the- I lo- Did no, I just go out? Did I just go out? That or? went out like two days ago. Oh, And everybody's- yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are all conspiracy theory stuff, you know, type of deal. I think, by the way, if, if not think- I mean, I think all these candidates are always at risk, right? Because politics is so divisive. Yeah, yeah. There's people that are so- They're already on the borderline of crazy. Oh, then they get caught up in all of this, and then they think that they're going to- do something amazing by trying to harm somebody in office, which is just absolutely terrible. Have we ever had a poor politician? A poor? Yeah, yeah. Like money somebody, poor? Yeah, somebody, yeah, like somebody who came from like nothing and actually no, doesn't have never. have a lot of money at the time. Like Carter. Wasn't Carter a, a wasn't he from He was like, a farmer. Was a farmer, right? A peanut farmer. Yeah. I think he was okay, well off. He was oh, was he? Yeah. Okay. I, think so. I don't yeah. imagine you could get that far, you know, yeah. without being like completely funded. Yeah. I don't know. You know, so the, we need the like, a real, we need like assass- a real people's champ like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody who just comes from like nothing. Like like a, a blue collar does like just doesn't yeah. doesn't have all this power and money behind him. Sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <just> fire everybody. <laughs> yeah. We're lo- what you're looking for is like some angel to lead us, which yeah. is not they don't exist. Yeah. yeah. No, but first of all, if they did, they wouldn't want to be present. They would you know what I mean? They'd be like, hell no, I'm not getting into this type of stuff. Anyway, crazy stuff. Hey, I wanted to say I've been using, you know, I've been doing the juve on and off. Yeah. I've been consistent with them pre-workout. It legit improves the pump for pre-workout for sure. Katrina and I used that having sex the other day. But wait, hold on. What? Wait. Yeah. The red Did light. give you a better pump? <laughs> no, just it, uh, it, it. I mean, I figured like Wait, while having pump. sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been tr- like we've been trying to use the red light more, and then we got the new the new Juve and stuff like so that. So your window to that faces outside looks. No, like we just. Side. I mean, it, I mean, we turn all the lights off with the Juve. It actually has this nice glow and it has this nice uh, this kind of nice color light to it Once. while you're yeah while you're wow. doing while you're having sex. I'll really? Try it. Yeah, no, How, try it. Put, I don't know. I don't know if Juve will appreciate that commercial or not. But it is a vasodilator. Just keep it real. I did like I said. I got a better pump. So yeah, yeah. No, we. I mean, that's maybe that's going to be our new thing here. We're like. We were trying to figure out, like, oh, how could we incorporate the juve more consistently in our life? And so then, well, we'll just turn it on every time we have sex. And, uh, all those two minutes add up. You, know you had to change positions. Hold on, I gotta get the right side, honey. Face this, way, this direction or whatever. I, I'm telling you, the juve pre workout for my joints and for pump, try it out. It makes a huge difference. You can feel it, huh? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yes. Uh, you know what? So I, I'm literally shining on the body part of my train too. You know what? I I haven't seen any science to support this, but I actually feel like right afterwards, just my skin looks better. It almost looks like I had like a real light tan, like right, right after one time. Blood flow. It. Oh, really? Yes. yes. That's why. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's blood flow. So it's it's that blood makes f- my skin look like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it doesn't look flushed, but you'll you'll notice no, it doesn't look nice flushed color. at all. It looks like it almost looks like I have a, like I just went and got a little bit of sun or yeah. got tan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just a real, bit. just a, uh-huh. a, a nice amount of it. Yep. Like it always makes my skin look better yep. right after. Yeah, no, I did it on my 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 back. Hit a back workout. Did it on my delts. Did a delt workout, and you can tell. You can tell you get a better pump. Oh. I've done it enough times now where I, I I can tell. I'm using a, now that we have the the new ones that we all got. I also have it set up too, where because I think I like the portable stand thing that we have now with these. Where I told you I've always wanted. Now, how much does glass window dilute the effect of it? Do you oh, know? I don't know how much, but I'm sure it does. And of course, yeah. it has to scatter some, some of them, but it's yeah. got to help some still, right? Sure. Because that's I I put oh, it outside the sauna, my shower. Oh. So I have a glass I have glass windows for my shower, and so I sit, set it right there, and so what? Why I'm showering, I can. 
just turn it on right Not there. Not a bad too. idea. Well, remember I told you I was always trying to find a way to do it with the shower, and I can't. I mean, I can't put it in the shower because it's going to get wet. Mm-hmm. But I can put it against the glass that's right there and, and shining into in there. Sure. Yeah, and that. So I know I'm obviously getting yeah. some of it, the benefits. But I wonder but now how much is diluted to the glass. Now that you're doing it for sex, though, that's. I mean, that's the winning yeah. way to do yeah. it for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, good excuse to have yeah. more of that. Hey, too. we need to go juve. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's the code. Yeah, it's code. It's <laughs> Katrina Knight's code when you leave a party. Just the so red that. light goes on. It's like, oh, I know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, shout out. Do your uh, your Sean Ryan guy. Yeah, Sean Ryan. So his podcast. A lot of great interviews. Um, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So he, by the way, uh, somebody sent me the CIA guy that was on his show recently and said, we could have him if you wanted him on the show. I didn't even know that was Sean Ryan in the first place. Okay. I'll, I'll send oh, it over send to you. Send him over, yeah. And then I'll, we'll have uh, Courtney look up, look him up. By the way, it's the Sean Ryan show, and Sean is S-H-A-W-N. Hey, Mind Pump has just released our first ever trainer and coach course. You want to be a successful trainer. You want to make more money. You want to build your business. You want to know how to get leads, how to close deals, how to be successful with your clients, how to get your clients sustainable results. This course was put together and run and taught by myself, Adam and Justin. We've been doing this for over 25 years. We know what makes trainers and coaches successful. And because it's a new launch, here's what you get. If you sign up now, you get a free maps prime program, a free maps prime pro program. You get to attend a live virtual lead generation masterclass. You get all 11 maps, mods, workout programs for free, all 13 maps guides for free. You get $200 off and you get access to our private Facebook group. That's only for trainers and coaches. Here's what you got to do. If you're interested, go to mindpumpfitnesscoaching.com and then use the code 200 off for all of that. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is John from Virginia. John, what's happening? How can we help you? I'm from Atlanta, but thank you for oh, taking really? my question. <laughs> um, so a little bit of a backstory. I used to be a runner, a distance runner. And so for most of my life, that was my main source of fitness. And it was a hobby I liked a lot uh, from my teens until my late 40s. And then I wore out the cartilage in my hips, especially my right hip. So I had to have a, a surgery called a hip resurfacing. And they put a cap on the femur. And if that surgery goes well, you're supposed to be able to continue running. But for me, it was it was unsuccessful. The surgery is about two and a half years ago. And you're not running experts, but I've it looks like it. I might not be able to really continue to run for the rest of my life because I get pain in my hip. So I've transitioned to uh, weightlifting a little more. The reason that running was so important to me is because it helped a lot with my mental well-being, uh, anxiety, and things of like that nature. I sleep better when I run, when I work out and exercise. And so now, you know, as a gym rat, I sometimes feel like I don't, I want to work out even more than my body allows. I've, I've heard you say a lot of times that you shouldn't work out every day. You need rest and recovery. Of course, I know that. I think one of the reasons you said people shouldn't work out really hard all the time is because they might burn themselves out and get discouraged and stop exercising altogether. That's not, but that's not going to be a problem with me. I'm very highly motivated. And so I've, I've had periods where I'll go, you know, 20 days in a row without taking a day off. I alternate muscle groups, you know, so I know to let certain muscle groups relax, but I want to know if you can give me permission to work out every day consistently and, (laughs) and give me some ideas about how I can do it without, uh, you know, getting injured because I have had some minor little injuries. I got a little thing in my forearm. So when I pick up a barbell, it hurts and that changes the exercises I want to do. And I've had a, uh, a little thing in my shoulder. So I know if you work out a lot, you run the risk of hurting yourself. And that has happened a little bit. Yeah. John, John, you, you had, you said something that I think is so important uh, about your, the, the mental side of what exercise does for you. And so if you were a client of mine, before I answered this question, I would, I'd ask an, another question to you. And that question would be, which one of these things is more important to you? Is it more important to you that we do what's best and optimal for your body for the best results, aesthetically, health, strength wise, or do you want to do what's best for you mentally and what you enjoy the most? Uh, and that is what I'd want to know most from you because th- how I guide you from there would, would be dictated by that answer. It's, I think it's a bit of both. I don't, sorry, I don't have a more satisfying answer. You know, you know the, like I mentioned, the anxiety, the sleep is in fact uh, impacted by my workouts. And I know that when I am hitting the gym hard or when I used to run, everything else would fall into place and I was just living a better, more optimal life. Mm-hmm. 
but I like the I like the fitness aspect too. I don't mind feeling fit and feeling good about it. John, so, we so don't, I like both. You don't have to pick either or. There's a way to do both. But before we get there, we got to take a step back. Okay, what is the feeling you're looking for that you got from running or that you get from exercising every day? Let's start there. Sense of accomplishment. Sense that you know you're doing something. You're kind of good at it and doing it doing it at a high level. Um, ironically, you know, even if I spend a lot of time working out, that actually helps me be more productive because I got to be careful about how I organize my time. If I'm going to do an hour and a half in the gym every day or two hours. Yeah. Um, so, so I like that that aspect of it. Well, listen, you're, um, I can relate very closely to what you're saying and you're speaking truth. This is true. Um, activity does have physical effects, but there's also mental effects. Now, if you go too far off, then you will negatively affect your mental health as well, right? If you overtrain too much, uh, it affects your sleep and your hormones. You start to injure yourself too much. I'm sure the fact that you had to stop running probably was a struggle that you've had to really work through and overcome. So we don't want to go there, right? We don't want to get to the point where this becomes an abusive uh, relationship uh, with exercise and then you lose everything. So look, here's the deal. What you're looking for is this feeling of accomplishment. I did something hard. It makes me feel good. It organizes my day. It's this powerful, enzyolytic, antidepressant, pro-productive activity. But if that activity starts to damage you to the point where not only can you not do it anymore, but then it starts to become detrimental, not only do you lose the the ability to do the activity, you, you now have lost this very powerful tool, and then you're way backwards. So there's a way to do it. And the way to do it is you have to modify intensity and movement and train appropriately if you're going to train every single day. What you don't want to do, and I used to see people do this all the time I, I, you know, in the gym. Like you get the meatheads who you know, they're bench pressing and they don't want their bench press numbers to go down. So the next thing you know, they're wearing an elbow sleeve. And then the next thing you know, they're yeah. using Icy Hot on their shoulder. And then they're taking ibuprofen. You know, I know guys that would take anti-inflammatories pre-workout because they just would, they didn't want to slow down or, or train any differently. And so this would cause them uh, problems as well. So what you don't want to do is compromise this incredible tool that you've discovered or that you've been working with for so long. So here's the deal. There's, there's, there's three things that you can manipulate. Well, let's, let's, let's look at four. There's four things you can man- manipulate with your training. There's the type of exercises and things that you do. There's the frequency, how often you do it. There's the volume, right? Which is how long you do it, how many sets, that kind of stuff. And then there's the intensity, how hard you do it. Now, the first one that I would manipulate, the first two that I would manipulate for you are what you're doing. So the type and the intensity. Those are going to be be the big ones for you. So you can exercise every day so long as you're you're doing the right complementary types of movements. In other words, if you start to develop movement pattern issues, you get knee pain or whatever, okay, let me find exercises that solve the root cause of this knee pain. So let me try different movements. And then the intensity, like you can work out every day. You can work out twice a day every day so long as the intensity is manipulated appropriately. Mm -hmm. So I would look at forms of activity that are a little bit more recuperative and throw those in. Mobility workout days are one. Swimming for a lot of people is is a great form of cardiovascular activity. It seems if you look at the injury rate with swimming compared to other forms of cardiovascular activity, it's like way down the list, probably because you're in the water, it's buoyant, you're, and, and there's lots of variations of, of swimming, unlike running, where it's the same movement over and over again. There's like different strokes you can do. You know, I used to train a guy that used to swim uh, like two miles a day, and he would alternate between like freestyle, butterfly, backstroke, uh, doggy paddle. He'd do all of them, and it prevented him from developing uh, issues because it wasn't the same repetitive thing over and over. And then with strength training, do you have any of our programs? You know, I don't. I don't. I have a I, – I, can I tell you real quickly my five-day cycle? Yeah, you can tell me your split, but I'll tell you – I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll give you a program that's better, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do chest and tries, and then I do light legs. The leg workouts are light because I don't want to aggravate my hip. Then I do back and shoulders and then light legs again. Okay. And then I repeat so the five-day thing. So I'm giving the muscle groups different times to, to rest. Okay. How uh, long are you in the gym for? 
about an hour of lifting and then maybe 15, 20 minutes of stretching, stretching into a little core stuff, yeah. mm-hmm. a little core and a little stretching every day. There's a lot that goes into making a cake. What you just told us is you use out, you use eggs, flour, and sugar, but that doesn't mean you made a cake, right? So your split doesn't mean a mu- doesn't mean much to me. I need to, see, I, I would need to go with you in your workout, see what you're doing. So what I want to do, John, is I'm going to send you a program that I think will be beneficial for you. I'm going to send you maps, symmetry. Symmetry is going to help balance the body out. Follow it like it's laid out, and you're fine. And I believe, how many days a week is symmetry? Is it five? Uh, yeah. It's like four or five. I think it's four, yeah. Four. Now, uh, on the other days, you could do mobility. You can swim. You could do any kind of activity that does that seems to feel recuperative. It, look, somebody like you, I'm looking at you, look healthy. I think you wrote down your age here. You're 53 years old. Um, you really just got to be smart with the kind of training, the combination, the intensity. Don't let it get away from you to where you start to compromise. Like you're talking about this pain on your elbow. Don't, you know, say, okay, well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing the same shit that hurts my elbow, but I'm going to try it this way. Like you just got to work with your body. And and when you figure that out, John, you'll never have to stop working out. You'll work out every day and you'll be fine, but you got to manipulate those, uh, those things that I said. So I'll send you a program, follow it. I think it'll help you a lot. If there's a movement in there that hurts you, then avoid that movement. See if you can modify it and then try other forms of activity that are more recuperative. I like swimming. I like yoga. I like hiking and walking. Uh, you know, those are all activities that seem to be more recuperative, um, than running tends to be. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with staying busy and active and, um, exercising like consistently and frequently. Uh, but you have to consider these other, um, these, these other cute variables, um, and to, especially the intensity piece. So I know, you know, a very go-getter type person like yourself, uh, and I can relate some as well in terms of getting after it intensively. Um, you know, it, that's where we get into, to sort of the, the waters where it, it's going to kind of turn and it's, it's not going to be necessarily beneficial to be in that state all the time. So to be able to kind of flux in and out uh, intensity wise and be able to check your because a lot of times when you get into these exercises, it's like, I got to do it in spite. I got to get to these reps in spite of, you know, what my body's signaling to me. So uh, to get to get a little more in tune with that and like figure out what the right dose is for you, that's where you can do it for the longevity to where it's not going to have like the detriment in terms of like affecting your hips and affecting, you know, you in a negative fashion. All right. That sounds, sounds like sensible advice. I appreciate it. You got it, Thank man. Thank you for your <laughs> yeah, yeah no, John, John our program though. You how long have you been listening to the show, John? Oh, maybe about a year, year and a half. I don't listen to every episode, but I listen to a lot. I usually skip to the. I like these leaders, uh, uh, these Q and A sessions. Excellent. Uh, awesome. I like a lot. Thank you, man. Thank you. You you won't have to stop working out, John. I promise. No, you. we Just, don't want you to. Man. Yeah, you do it the right yeah. way. You'll be able to do this forever. I, I'd love to hear back from you as you go through the program. Okay, I'll give you a feedback. Thank you so much. You guys are really kind. I appreciate you. you All got right, it, John. Man. Thanks, John. Have a great. Yeah, that's that's. I don't, that's, I don't know if I agree with your advice. What do you think? I just think that he need. I, I can. Can't you smell the like kill yourself intensity? Of course, yes. like, of course. Come on, like, and, and telling him that he could potentially have both is a lie. You can't can have both. You can't be the guy who thinks he can j- just push his body to extreme no, that's levels. Not what I said. Yeah, but that's what he said first. No, that's no, why no. I said I would ask you what you what you what you, is more important to you. And that's what you're going to no, get. No, that. no, no. You can have the mental and you can have the physical at the same time. You cannot beat the shit out of yourself. Yeah, that's the part that you got to understand. That's what I was trying to say to him. But you can definitely have the have it to where you feel good mentally. No. But, and also get have a healthy body. In yeah, fact, they're not that, separate. They're that, the that, same. That type of client is is so yeah. disconnected from what makes their body. That, that's like a cortisol junkie. Totally. Yeah. They 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 inter they interpret the spike in cortisol as good and healthy for them. They're right. Like they're they're so disconnected. Yeah. And then you tell that person like back off all the intensity. Well, I can't wait to hear how isometrics go for this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna die. Well, well, we'll, we'll I bet you money him. he doesn't finish phase one. Well, if that's the case, then that's, that's the case, right? because but, it's that's such an extreme difference from this yeah. guy. And part of a part of this transition that he's at in his life right now is accepting that he's not 25 years old. He can't go all, he can't go to failure. He can't train intense, yeah. you know, because he said it like that, that 
man, when I trained that way, it gave me all these things that I felt. And so he wants both, but both yeah. are not real. Yeah. He, his training has to look way different than it ever has before. And it's going to feel different from you. You're going to walk out from a, from a symmetry and it ain't going to feel like when you accomplished a, a, a 15 mile bike ride. He'll want to do it, more. Yes. Yeah, I know. Well, that's I, good. No, this is good. I, I hope he hears this, 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 this back half, but the myth is that you have to sacrifice the mental health effects for well, physical no, and vice that, versa. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's this, that that there is they're not they're the same. They're, they're absolutely the same. There's a bad relationship. So I said that's right. That's right. There's there's a there's a and right. there's a disconnect there. So that's it, why it, I asked him, what are you looking the, the for? The intensity What's the piece is the biggest yeah. part that, to, to that, focus on of reducing. That client has an attachment to a feeling that he wants, yeah. and and telling him that he can have both is going to make him think that I'm going to get that feeling. That I've had in the past while also listening to these guys on the way to training. And no, he's no, not no. going to. No, 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 no. It's gonna be a different no, feeling. It's no, not no. the same feeling. No, it's it's there's there's abuse, there's a feeling from the abuse <laughs> that you have, and there's a feeling from good. It, it, this is right. Our next caller, Sam from France. Sam, how's it going? How are you how doing? Can help you? What's happening, man? It's very cool to see you guys. Uh I appreciate you taking the time for me. Um so first I would like to thank you for all what you did for me and others. So this post, this podcast has really been uh, helpful to me, uh, and getting real life advice from you is is really cool. So thank you. Uh, I had a, que a question regarding maps performance phase four, uh, regarding maps instinctive intervals. Uh, so it says in the blueprint that uh, you're supposed to do the warm up. Uh, two to uh, five minutes, I think, between uh, before um, the sprints, but I didn't really uh, get uh, whether it was uh, supposed to be before each interval or before each uh, set, so to so to speak. Well, the warm up itself is 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 um, most beneficial in the very beginning. So uh, you can do a lot with dynamic warm up. Uh, to kind of prep yourself up for sprint. Sprinting itself is going to take a lot out of you in terms of like, um, I would spend the extra amount of time, like even if it's up to 10 to 15 minutes uh, beforehand, kind of ramping your body up uh, because of the impact and so much stress. Um, and so for for what it what it highlights is sort of um, you know that beginning b before you get into the sets with um, with the sprinting, I would. I would just make sure you spend an excess amount of time warming up with that, with the dynamic warm up. In other words, you warm up and then you do your, your workout. You don't have to warm up before every sprint. Yeah, it's not before each interval. And are you asking, because I see further down in your question that you are trying to work on getting an ass to grass type of squat. You've been doing combat stretch in 9090. And is that question coming yeah. up because you're wanting to know if you can do that in between all these sets? Because if, if that's, uh, well, yeah, tell me. Uh, this one was... Uh uh, the the mobility between sets was rather for more uh, traditional type of exercises. So, uh, for example, right now I'm following Maps Aesthetic, and between my uh, focus uh, session exercises, uh, I did uh, I just go into the squatted position and I try to spend time there. So I was asking myself if it, if it would be beneficial or maybe it would not let me recover as much. Yes, no, it, it it's it's totally okay. I it, would take it away from your rest period, though. If you need to rest for two minutes, then the then the the mobility doesn't count. So you do the mobility and then rest. Rest is rest. You don't do anything. Okay. the The only reason why uh, the only reason why okay. okay. So there's there's a little bit of nuance there, right? Like you're if it's focus sessions. So if you're doing like tricep pushdowns. And you're resting in between, and you got down, and you did some um, combat stretching while you're you're resting. It, that's not a bad thing. Is it going to maximize your tricep pushdowns, and would you get more gains from it than being fully recovered and rested? And like, we're not a fan of people doing things in between sets, so that's not going to be optimal for building your triceps. But if I have a goal, like I had this exact same goal with the combat stretch in 9090, it took it took precedence over all the other things. So it's like if this is a moment where if I can do this and I wouldn't do it if I don't, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it right now. Yes, I'm not gonna get the biggest triceps because it's not the best way for me to do my focus sessions on my triceps, but uh, it's also a way for me to make progress on my combat stretch in my 90-90. And so I'm gonna you have to give and take a little bit, right? You understand what 
you're doing is you're not doing what's optimal for you building your arms or whatever you picked for your focus session, but you are frequently doing your combat stretch in 99 and more. Now, in a perfect world, you don't do it there and you add the frequency throughout your day. Yeah. That's in the perfect world. But if I had a choice where you said, Adam, I'm going to do t combat stretch 10 times today and five of the ways you were going to do that was going to be in the workout between sets and then you I either have to choose you do those five or you don't do those five. Well, I would rather because that's a major goal of ours is to get down there. I'd rather you sacrifice that. That's not the best way to do focus sessions and get the five more times of doing combat stretching. But if I had the option as your trainer and I said, hey, I need you to do this 10 times a day. And I was like, do your workout the way it's laid out. And then what I'd like you to do is on the hour, every hour for the rest of the day, get down there and do the combat stretch and you would do it. Well, then that's the better situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. Excellent. Uh, and for the kettlebell complex, yes. I didn't really understand if I had um, to keep the same weight. Yeah, so for the yeah, I saw that part of your question too. So, in terms of the kettlebell complex itself, it's set up, and this is this is a conditioning phase. So, um, what you want to do is make sure you find uh, kettlebells that you can press overhead. So, um, you you are going to keep the the same weight consistent throughout the entire complex because you're moving from one exercise to the next to the next, basically without rest and make it sure that, you know, your form doesn't break down. So that's, you know, that's the one stipulation to this whole thing is like, you know, yes, you're, you're going through, um, a bit of conditioning, but that doesn't mean that if your form deteriorates to, to keep pushing through it with bad form. So you set it down, uh, and, and then you keep working on being able to do that with, with perfect form throughout the amount of reps that are indicated. Uh, but yes, keep the same weight, uh, through each exercise. Okay, so I did it wrong then. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that's okay. But, it's good to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I had a, maybe if we if we have time for a quick programming question. Yeah, let's uh, do it. So I did uh, anabolic advanced when it uh, was released. Uh, it was maybe not the best choice, but I saw great gains from it. Uh, it was my first maps, and then I did anabolic performance, and I'm on the last two weeks on. Uh, of uh, aesthetics, so I was um, wondering which program would be best next. So I have mm. many many others. So oh yeah, if uh, maybe, maybe strong, maybe symmetry, strong or symmetry or power lift. Yeah, all yeah. three would. Be I great. mean, what what excites you most? Like, are you, are you more driven by aesthetics or or performance or lifting real heavyweight? Uh, I was very driven by aesthetics, but I'm trying to get away from this. So hmm. maybe more. Performance focused. Go power lift. Then. Power yeah, lift. Power yeah, lift. Power lift. Be a great. One. Do you have power lifts? Do you have it? Yeah. Oh, Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good man. Are you in our forum? Can, can we give you something? No, not yet. All okay, right. Let's well, put him in the forum. You're only 18, huh? Uh, I'm 19 uh, since uh, January 6th. Good for you. Yeah. Good hey, for you doing this at right. such a young age. Yeah. Dude. How what, Thank are, you. are you trying to pack on muscle? Are you trying to build muscle or what? Yeah. How's your diet? Yeah. Exactly. How's your diet? Uh, really good. Uh, I'm very. Maybe a bit neurotic, uh, but uh, uh, I I eat my protein and I eat uh, forty seven hundred calories per day. For forty seven hundred. Thirty seven. Thirty seven hundred. That's good. Oh, yeah. them them yeah. them teenage yeah. metabolism. Yeah. Good, good for you. Hey, listen, you are on the right track. That's I right. wish I wish I knew what I know now at your age. So you're doing everything right, man. Keep doing. Be consistent. Don't succumb to the, you know, you want to get there faster and do anything. You're fine. You're doing great. You're going to, you're going to do, you're yeah. going to see great results. Gradual over the years. progress, man. You're just building on That's it. Right. Oh, thank you. I, I really need to, to hear that. Thank you, you. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. I love that. Ah, young man I yeah. doing all those things. Doing the right I, things. I love when we get like young teenage kids. I mean, he's actually, and he's been probably listening for a while where he's got all the programs. Yeah. He yeah. said he ran, he ran. He ran uh, anabolic advanced, anabolic. anabolic performance, and he's in a yeah. state now, so mm -hmm. well over a year. Yeah, I wish he didn't. I wanted to give him something. You know? <laughs> I knew <laughs> the forum, so. All right. Bought yeah. all of it already. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Very cool. Our next caller is Landon from North Carolina. Landon, what's up, man? What up? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Man, this is so cool. It's good to talk with y'all today. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, I'm doing great, all right. <laughs> caller from 2022. <laughs> We've been on here already? What's that? I said, have you been on here already? Yeah, yeah. So I spoke with you guys back, uh, oof, I think towards the end of 22. 
um, about clean bulks versus dirty bulks and uh, have tried my best to go the clean route. But that's, that's partially what my question is today. And um, I know your guys' time is really valuable, so I want to go ahead and jump in if that's okay. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's do it, dude. Do it. Um, I, I sent a pretty lengthy question. I'm not going to go through all of that because it's, it's a lot. But um, th- there's a bit of an update since I sent that. Did you guys see – my question that I said. Yeah, we're looking at it right now. We can see. You them. can give it. Go ahead and go go through it a little yeah. bit just for the audience, so they can hear okay. what's going okay. on. Okay, sounds good. So basically, um, I've cycled through a decent number of uh, maps programs, um, which, by the way, are all fantastic, expertly programmed and written. And I see immediate strength gains on each one I do. Um, so I ran through anabolic performance, aesthetic, and then went to power lift. Saw explosive strength on power lift. Um, and then I had to stop strong midway through my joints were killing me. Um, and I just needed, I think something different. So I switched into symmetry to end the year and, uh, that ended up being really good. Felt great, which by the way, anyone who's sleeping on symmetry, that is an amazing program. Um, and on the five by five too is, is awesome. So that was, that was great. And now for 24, I'm basically just trying to cycle anabolic. Uh, I just started that over. And just going to see if I can ratchet up the strength gains throughout the year. But the main question, man, is I don't know if it's my body type, hard gainer or what, but it is a beast to, ju- to try to put on lean body mass. Um, I can increase body weight. I mean, I love to eat, but putting on true lean muscle um, seems to be hard. So just I just basically want to spitball and uh, brainstorm ideas of what I'm doing wrong because I know the programming is amazing. The work's being put in, just trying to figure out what's going on. I don't, I don't. Okay. So let's, let's back up here for a second. Um, okay. When you first started, how old are you? First of all, 32. Okay. So you're 32 years old. And when you started lifting weights, what was your lean body mass at? And what's that? Where, what are you at now? Like what kind of gains have you made over the, over the, over the period of time you've been lifting weights properly? Oh goodness. I mean, I, I was an athlete, played basketball growing up. So I've started like sophomore year of high school and couldn't even, you know, bench barely the bar. Um, so I've gone from, you know, the 25s on each side as a milestone to now hitting 280. Um, so I've, I've made strength gains. How, uh, how um, tall are you? Six, five. So you're six, five. Were you six, five in high school too? I was about six, three. Okay. Um, so I grew up a little bit in college as well. I remember, um, you know. yeah, bro, you, you've made, I mean, you've made yeah. incredible progress. He, okay. Here's what Huge happens. Progress. Now we're going to break down what you're doing to see if there's anything we can change, but, okay. um, building muscle is a slow, long process in the first couple years. It can happen pretty quickly if you do everything right. So, you know, packing on okay. 15 pounds of lean body mass, uh, is what a lot of guys can do with good training and good diet within the first maybe two or three years. After that, it's it, it gets really tough. Genetics play a big mm-hmm. role. Now you're obviously a tall dude. You're six mm-hmm. five. You're you're you know you're you built like a basketball player. It's probably going to be a bit tougher yeah. for you to gain lean body mass. Yeah. yeah, but your strength is fucking amazing. A guy that tall who could bench as much as you can. What's your squat at? Uh, three sixty five right now, yeah. bro. You're crushing it in the fours. Yeah, yeah you're strong. I've had it in the fours before, but it's dropped a little bit. Wait, you've got up to four hundred pound squat at six five, under two hundred pound body weight. Yeah, that's unreal. Four twenty was my highest, but again, uh, at, a, at a body weight under two hundred pounds. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, bro, that's amazing. It's stronger than I was. Yeah, you're you're okay. you're yeah. doing a great job. Yeah. So yes, you, you, you know, did you see in his thing too? Like, so he admits that he's got a little bit of body dysmorphia, and that's kind of what's going on. Yeah, right now, dude. Is you, yeah. you have you have a distorted view of what what you've really accomplished. I mean, you mm-hmm. really have done inc- incre- yeah. incredible incredible work. Yeah, you've done great. Um, everything seems to be. Good. How's your energy, libido? It says here your sleep is good and all that stuff. Is libido good? Energy good? Yeah, all that's good. Uh, the only time that dropped was towards like phase three of aesthetic. Too, too much volume. <laughs> I was definitely overtrained then. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But overall, man, I feel I feel great. And your body fat percentage it says here's at thirteen percent. Yeah, I'm back down to about ten now. Oh, bro, you so, could you could go, yeah, you got to eat more. So I got, You're fine. You know what's interesting? When was when was the last time you actually ran a cut? I'm in one now. Like I, okay. I was in a slight bulk most of 23, but I've been cutting probably for six to eight weeks now. Oh, time to okay. go back on a bulk. Yeah, go on a bulk. Hey, and here's something too: with like you're you're really lean. I can, I mean, I can see how lean you are. Hearing your numbers, they're phenomenal. What you're doing, you could afford to put some excess body fat on. So with a client like okay. you, 
what and, and I, I've been exactly in this. We have, uh, I think, and I remember when we first met and we talked the first time, I think I related to like some of the challenges that you had yeah. and stuff like that of trying to put weight mm -hmm. on. And I don't know if I told you this back then or not, but one of the like rules that I gave myself when I was really trying to put on size and was struggling to do that was I would allow myself to have some of the foods that are not ideal for me. You know, the popcorn, the candy, the ice cream, these things like that after I hit my macro targets. And what that did was it, it helped. Okay. I got, I got what my body needs to build and, and build, put on the muscle like I want now it be, because I'm not very hungry, but I could have some candy or I could eat a, a I can always eat a bowl of ice cream. I'm always up for that. Like those, oh, yeah. those type of things help me push beyond on the calories the mistake I would make when I was younger and didn't know any better is I would I would oh, say okay to the candy and the ice cream. And then when I found when I started tracking, I realized, oh shit, I'm just eating a ton of sugar You're not hitting carbs, your protein. and I'm not hitting my protein intake. I'm I'm missing what my body needs to build muscle, but I'm over consuming on calories, and so I'm just putting body fat on. So if you give yourself a little bit of that freedom of allowing yourself some of these mm -hmm. hyper palatable foods in to help push the calories up, but discipline yourself to not until I do this, not until I train, yeah. not until I hit my protein intake. If I check those boxes, it's on. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy some of those foods. Yeah. And I'm going to get into some other stuff in your question. You got to eat more. You just got to eat more. And look for me now, and I'm older now, so it's different, but you know, when I was younger and my metabolism was like yours, I'm not as tall as you, but I, you know, it was like, I would just, it was so hard to gain weight, um, uh, for me. Um, I had to, I built the most strength and muscle when my body fat percentage was around 14, 15%. Oh, okay. Okay. And by the way, 15% is a, is a good body fat percentage to be at 10% is lean. I mean, that's like, you can see your abs 15% right. is totally fine. If I tried to pack on mass and stay 10, 11% body fat, especially when my, hard. when I was younger, it wouldn't happen. Hard. I'd have to push yeah. the calories and allow my body fat to creep up. But man, I would get stronger and I would build muscle and then I would cut down and I'd do it again and cut down. This is the old method of bulking and cutting. And uh, it allowed me to continue to add more and more mass over time. But if I tried to do it while not really gaining much body fat, it would have been impossible. Now, you also said up here, you don't even take creatine. Creatine is, you have to, creatine is good for you. Somebody, by the way, someone your size take 10 grams a day. By the way, that'll help right now. If you were to take 10 grams a day right now, by the end of next week, so maybe a week and a half, two weeks from now, you'll be up by about five pounds on the scale and your and the weight on the bar will go up by about 10 pounds on most of your lift and just the, from creatine and the weight will look good. Cause it'll, it'll volume. Your muscles your are going to be fuller. Yeah. Your muscles, will you are better. missing out by not taking creatine. You're in fact, it's going to blow your mind. when We you take it. You're going to be like, Oh, this feels great. And it's so good. I, I actually did. Sorry. That, that was one other update. Um, I started during my cut. I didn't take it at all in 23. Heard you guys talking about how great it is. <laughs> so I started on that. I probably get like four grams or whatever it is. Milligrams a day. Um, it's four, but would you suggest even bumping that up to 10? 10. Now? Yeah. You're a big guy. I'd go 10 grams a day. Okay. In okay. fact, I mean, look, most people five grams is, is enough, but now we have data showing that 10 grams, uh, especially for larger individuals might have some additional benefits. So awesome. I would go, yeah, go 10 grams a day. You don't, you can split the dose or not. I don't think it makes a big difference. The, it also says here, you're taking a DHT blocker like Propecia. Is that, are you still taking that? Yep, I am. That's correct. That, is that for hair loss? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to keep the main. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It could definitely have a negative effect on. Okay. Yeah. So DHT, yeah. it's not like this muscle building hormone, but it, there are health effects that come from having normal DHT levels and there are negative effects from blocking DHT. So DHT is a very strong androgen. So it's not anabolic, right? Like other hormones, not a muscle builder. But DHT will make you stronger and it'll increase okay. your libido and it'll do all these. In fact, some of the best, we're going to go off in a little dark route here, but some of the best strength building steroids that are out there are derived off of DHT. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would go off the Propecia. What about what? Uh, and then you can look, there's a company called Intera Skincare. So go to interaskincare.com forward slash mind pump. Or go to mindpumppartners.com. Yeah, mindpumppartners.com will have it there too. And there's a product called Folatin, which is amazing for hair loss and it does not affect your hormone levels. If you do okay. the research on blocking DHT, it, it's not a good thing. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to necessarily do that. I mean, I know there's some, some, some applications that are important for certain situations, 
But especially at your age, I would go Folatin, get off the Propecia, and you'll probably notice some strength gains uh, from doing so. No kidding. Yep. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Will do. And you made a you made a good point too about um, the metabolism. Uh, and I heard you say before, Sal, when you would go into a 500 calorie surplus, you'd be at maintenance basically within three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, your metabolism would shift, and I I can, you know, I can relay that as well. Um, so eat more. Um, that's why the hyper palatable foods will help. Let you. your body fat go up a little bit while yeah. you're training. By the way, do you have MAPS Anabolic Advanced? No, I don't. All right, um, do that. That's gonna that's gonna put some muscle mm -hmm. on you. Go into bulk, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. You will. That's you're gonna pat. You'll put on. I I would expect to put on a good five five pounds of lean body mass by the end of it. No kidding. Yeah, but you awesome. gotta go on a nice go on a nice bulk. Okay. Okay. Well, that, I mean, it's good to know too that our body types, I might build muscle better at 14 to 15. That gives me permission to get up to that point. So, you will. Um, you will. Yeah, dude. You will. No, no okay, way, man. No way. I could never, a 10% body fat, I would not build The muscle. only time I was able to do that was when I was competing and I'm on steroids. It was the only, yeah. definitely, naturally young, like I had to push my body fat percentage up to put on some good weight. So yep. just have a little more freedom with the food, dude. You can you can afford it. Yep. And then it's so it'll be so easy for you to cut anyway afterwards because your body probably wants to sit leaner anyway. Sure. Right on, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for all you do for for your help, and uh, I'll keep in touch. Looking forward to putting this to to good use. You got it, man. Right, I can't it. wait to hear back from you. Let us know what happens after anabolic advanced. Yeah, we'll do. All Sounds right, good. You got it, man. I, you know, it it was to the point where I remember the the hardest, most aggressive, consistent. Like I don't care about anything. I'm just gonna pack on size mm -hmm. bulk. I ever did. I got my body fat up to. 17 and a half percent. And I was eating a lot and a lot of shit. I was eating everything. I was yeah. probably 5,000 calories a day. Yeah. And that was the highest I could get. Just that's how my body was. Yeah, it just yeah. would not. I mean, if you're, if you're training hard with it, it's, <laughs> that's what's so funny, right? Like, uh, putting on lots of body fat is really easy to, when you do nothing and you eat like yeah, shit. Yeah. You eat a lot, but if you if you're training and you're hitting your protein intake and then you're just way over consuming calories, yeah. you'd be surprised how hard it actually is to put on lots. You're you're sending this consistent signal to build muscle and you're flooding with plenty of nutrients and calories. It takes a lot to put all that. It, it genetically super gifted people, okay, which are super rare. It's like as rare as like seven foot tall people, or whatever. Super rare. There are super rare individuals out there that can pack muscle on and maintain like 10, 9% body fat. Yeah. And I have met, I think I can think of one or two in my entire well, life. Well, they're all over Instagram too, by the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we now have a distorted, that's part of the problem. Yeah, right now, totally. Is there's this distorted idea of like, there's a lot of those people, but they literally, all those people post pictures on Instagram yeah, and you're yeah. probably following all Just of them. Than <laughs> wow, he gained 15 pounds yeah. and he shredded. Like, yeah, yeah. There's literally, they're, they're literally like less than 1% of the population, but they're all of the people in your feed. Yep. And so you think that like, oh, this is totally obtainable. Totally. Look, if you love the show, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free fitness guides. Also, we're on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 